Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for the first visit on my gigantic tour of the USA. And my first stop today is at this amazing private car collection that you can see through the windows behind me. So I've just come outside of New York to Top Gear Imports NJ here in New Jersey, where I'm going to show you around this almost museum-like display of some of the greatest hypercars. To give you a quick taster, I mean there's a 550 Spider right behind me, a bit of a Porsche theme, two 918s, two Carrera GTs, two 959s, also joined though by a McLaren Senna, a Bugatti Veyron and plenty more including around the back that we're going to go and explore. But better still, have a look at some of the colours. Lots of unique one-offs, paint to sample colours, exactly what I love and the way that they're presented as well, this is pretty special. So let's head in then and take a look at this private collection. Let's have a look inside here then and go for a quick run through of the cars that are on display or at least the ones that are in this beautifully presented almost as I said museum like display that we have here. So starting at the right you've got the Golf Blue Carrera GT, a silver 959, a heavily MSO'd McLaren Senna, the Lamborghini Aventador SV, this is a Viper Green 918 Visac package, behind it you have the Riviera Blue Visac package, then at the back that's very rare, the 911 Turbo S Cabriolet exclusive series, Ferrari Testarossa, Bugatti Veyron, the Golf Livery 959, a Silver Carrera GT, the 911 Speedster at the back and plenty more as well. Uh, we're going to talk about what's going on back there including there's an RS 4 litre I can just spot and who better to show us around today than Sean, the man responsible Tim, for the space. Welcome to New York. Thank you very much and this, this is epic, this is absolutely stunning. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the new supercar event center that we just started. We opened this event center just recently showcasing all my personal collection in here uh, to allow people to rent this space and have yeah. parties and events and fashion shows and brand launching here in New York City uh, with all these supercars. Wait, it couldn't really be better. And the thing that immediately stands out to me, as many of my audience will know, I am a big fan of cars that have a story, have a special, unique specification, color scheme. You've got a lot of that. Yes, that's something that I'm very fond of, which is paint to sample cars, mm -hmm. rare collectible cars. So here what we have is different cars that I can show you that are pretty much little, literally one of one. Like this is a paint to sample uh, Viper Green one of one mm -hmm. 918 Spider that I acquired a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, there's only one made of, of, of this particular color. Uh, same thing here, the, this is a Gulf Blue Carrera GT. Uh, one of two produced. Uh, I actually have a friend of mine that has the other the one. The other one, okay, the two of them. And I'm just quickly going to say as well, that 918 was the first time we met when you were driving that. That's uh, right, in Monterey, Monterey last year, last year when, when, when we met. Indeed, and Visac package. I, I love the 918, it's so, so cool. So do I. And then Carrera GTs, well, I mean Porsche's Carrera GTs, the Golf Blue, and also with some very nice matching luggage beside it. Yes, the, the Gulf Blue, I acquired this car about seven years ago. Yeah. And I found out about this car and I chased it down. I flew down to Miami and I literally fell in love oh, with really? it and I bought the car. Uh, but it's definitely a, a stunning color combination. Factory black wheels, mm -hmm. uh, only one of two produced in the Porsche historic color of Gulf Blue. Um, matching interior. Uh, it has little minor details that are very rare in this particular mm -hmm. model. As you know, there were only a handful of uh, options available. This one yep. has the full carbon fiber interior, including the steering wheel, okay. uh, the door sills. Um, so this is definitely one of my pride possessions. Very low miles, but I do use it. I drive all my cars. Yeah, well, I mean, Carrera GTs are clearly a big thing. So you have the, the silver one just over this side. I suppose the more traditional specification. That is something that you see more of. Uh, something that I uh, I see a lot more on, on uh, on the streets then, then a definitely a paint to sample color. Yeah. But there's also one somewhere in the back there. Yeah. That is oh, yeah, yeah. A, the pearl white one. A pearl white one. Lovely. So, I, I mean, I don't really know, know exactly where to begin, but the room that we're standing in, the way that you have the cars positioned on these uh, pedestals almost, it's a really, really cool place. Cool setup, the seating areas. And you know, we, we rent this out for events. I uh -huh. want to give everybody an ability to come in and, and take advantage of this place and these beautiful cars and, and, and book their birthday parties yeah. uh, or a branding uh, party, a fashion show around uh -huh. supercars uh -huh. 
Uh, we have great sound system, great music, great lighting here, and a great atmosphere. Uh -huh. uh, and we have an in-house chef that does all our catering for us. Oh, really? Well, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to come in, and I'm sure the viewers do as well. Um, I, I think we should have a quick run through of some of the other cars as well, if you don't mind. Um, I'm not the best at older Porsches, but I know we're looking at a Speedster. Yes, it's an 89 Speedster, as you know, with the new Speedster coming. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a, an iconic car because it's an 89, it's only one of. Uh, Hellgelb, which is a... Uh, Hellgelb. Hellgelb is a... Like hell yellow. Hell yellow. <laughs> uh, this particular uh, car was ordered by one of the CEOs of Porsche back okay. in 1988. Um, and it has, if you look at the wheels in the back, this has a RSR wheels that are actually from factory. Okay. On the window sticker. So, so it came with... ordered specifically with these wheels, which has a very deep dish in the back. Uh -huh. uh, aggressive stance, the classic speedster windshield mm -hmm. and the interior is brown which is very unusual especially style. against that color combo color coded wheels the color the top is the same as the interior which oh the really top is looks stunning okay uh, very low miles original paint mm -hmm. uh, it's been in my collection for about nine years and i plan to keep it for a lot more years and, and next to that Golf livery 959. So there's a story behind this. this. This car started as a black 959. Okay. And as you know, with the Courier GT, I'm a big fan of golf blue colors, the golf blue livery, both the orange and the golf blue. So I decided with a friend of mine that we're gonna paint this golf blue. Okay. So we commissioned this, we sent this to a very reputable body shop. We took every single bolt, every single gasket. And when you look at this car, every door jam, everything is painted. This yep. is all painted. There's no decals on this car. And every mm -hmm. door jam, every bolt, every door hinge was replaced and repaired in this car. So we have pretty much a, a car that Porsche would build. The engine compartment, the front, yeah. uh, every seal, every window, everything. The man hours that went in this car to I can imagine. this has been incredible. And I'm also just going to point out randomly, by the way, guys, heel tread socks in golf livery in the Shmi shop. Link down below for those if you're interested. And then Ferrari race car. Before we stay, I think those stocks are staying with me before you. <laughs> well, maybe not these ones. You can have a new pair. Well, I have open. <laughs> <laughs> what are we looking at here? Uh, that is a, so that's a 2002 Formula One race car. Yeah. That was test driven. Uh, during the test by Michael Schumacher mm -hmm. and I acquired this car a few few months ago and What's great about this is this is the era when Formula One cars used to sound like Formula One. Yeah, cars. proper V12 uh, It's proper exhaust proper details. So this was driven signed by Michael Schumacher yeah. uh, I actually have his original helmet at home somewhere. Oh cool. Uh, that's also signed by him, but I didn't leave it here uh, So this is again one of the I'm a big fan of Formula One. Yeah, big fan of Michael Schumacher so this was something that I really wanted to add to my collection and I think it's a great showpiece here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Formula One cars always stand out. And then um, I guess we get to one of the most iconic cars of recent times, the Bugatti Veyron. You know, this is a poster I used to have many years ago when it first came out. I always wanted one. Yeah. Luckily, about a year and a half, two years ago, I was able to acquire this car. It's yeah. such a advanced car for its era. Till today, I mean, this is a 2006 model. Mm -hmm. uh, even in today's standards, 10, 15 years later, this drives such like an advanced automobile, such a fast car, all-wheel drive, feels great, handles well, brakes well. Yeah. The aerodynamics on this car is so light year ahead of itself, just like the Senna next door. Yeah. It has all this technology they were using, Bugatti was using it back in 2006. There is, however, one thing that I notice is different about this to normal. Is the wheels. wheels. Yeah. So, Tim, I drive my cars in Manhattan, and as yeah. you know, the tires and the wheels that come in these cars are fairly expensive. I can expensive. imagine. Potholes, Pot bumps, holes, uh, horrendous roads. Yeah, so I put about 3,000 miles just this year on this car. I've wow. Rallies. I did three rallies with the car, uh, some charity events as well, I display yeah. it in different car shows. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I wanted to not only just look, I want to have the functionality of driving a car that I don't have to worry about changing tires yeah. every couple of thousand miles. Yeah. As you know, they're very expensive. Yeah. So I kind of went with looks as well as you know, something that a little more durable and popular yeah. in New York City. Yeah, pothole friendly. And uh, you mentioned Senna and Senna Aero. Your Senna, I can see from here, has quite a few bits and pieces from MSO on it. Yes. Paintwork, livery, design. 
the entire color. The color, the color is called caliber black. It almost looks black here. Mm -hmm. But if you come and when you see the sunlight hit it, it, it it's like a dark blue color. Yeah, I see that. Uh, it has some nice red accents. Uh, that did not come from factory. Okay. Um, I added some of the some mm -hmm. of the accents on it because I wanted to see more of the the hips on the car. So by adding the the red accent, yep. made the car look even whiter. I actually quite like this. I like these small um, the outline of the vents and also here on the gurney, just yeah. emphasizing some of those. Uh, even the intake, we, we decided to, yep. to kind of gives it a little more contrast to it. And you know, the one big difference from mine is that you've got the much louder sounding two tailpipe exhaust rather than our European three. Three pipes. Setup. I do love the way the three pipes look. The three the pipes pipe look good. Full acceleration do sound very well. This sounds better. For those out there wondering, I get this question a lot. Two pipes basically is the normal muffler. The third pipe that we have in Europe is an additional silencer, which basically makes the car a little bit more quiet to meet with the new European regulations. So American markets or many other markets don't need that additional silencer. So basically they just have the titanium exhaust, which eventually goes a little bit blue. As you can see here, this has clearly been driven. Yes. You can see some blueing of the exhaust I got system. A couple hundred miles on it good stuff good stuff and uh yeah looking mega then we've got the 959 black wheels on the 959 yes this is another 959 that we have uh this one's only got 5,000 miles on it okay uh certainly all original uh down to the the brakes the brakes were never even changed on this car side the original really rotors and its original brakes are the way it came from the factory so I'm keeping it this way we don't drive this car uh born with sports seats which are very rare in this car yeah. um it's got two owners Pride possession, yeah. something of a collection favorite. piece. And then to something a bit different, the Lamborghini in your collection, the Aventador SV. You know, we have a, a Mura as well, mm -hmm. uh, but this is something that uh, just the classic look of a Lamborghini. The doors go up. Yeah. Uh, sounds great. Uh, nice bright color. Uh, I wanted to also add a little focus. There's too many Porsches in here. There are a lot of Porsches. But McLaren, a Bugatti, a Lamborghini in here. <laughs> to kind of break it up a little bit. There's only one Ferrari in here. Fortunately, unfortunately, it's a Testarossa. Well, well, we'll get over there in a second. But hey, I don't, I don't blame you. The Aventador is a pretty iconic car. It's been flagship of an era, really. Um, uh, it really is. And then the other 918. Yeah, this is a, this is a paint to sample of Rivera Blue. Mm -hmm. What's unique about this car, it's got nine miles on it, so it's never been driven. Nine miles? Yeah, this is probably the only car in here that's never driven. Okay. Uh, it's a YSAC. It's one of two produced in this Rivera Blue. Uh, matching black accents. Uh, as you can see, there's no 918 Spider. Oh, that's unusual. In the back. No deleted. badging on here. Like normal, you'd have it just under the Porsche logo. Uh, and also the green. Usually the badging will have green in Ah, oh, yeah, because of the e-hybrid badges at the side and things. Correct. So the, the calipers were, were not uh, green. None of the accents are green. Mm -hmm. In the interior, it's matching piping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking out all the green accents from it. Well, that's a different angle of the, for the car. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, the more I think the more time goes by, the more I appreciate the 918 Spider. It was the underdog when it launched. It's a great driving car. If you have yeah. a top comes off on the car, it's a great sounding machine. Yeah. It's all-wheel drive, and it still has plenty of warranty left, so you don't yeah, have to yeah. cringe every time you step on the throttle. So this is very rare. Remind me how many there are. So there were 200 of these made. There were yeah. 500 coupes made, yeah. and about 200 uh, cabriolets. What's unique about this car is it's been actually, I bought this about 35 days ago, and it's already oh, visited. Okay seven countries it's only so you only had it for just over a month over a month uh, <laughs> i took delivery in stuttgart yeah i drove it to switzerland then to italy <laughs> and then to the monaco grand prix yeah and then it was shipped here in the u.s and then recently i took a trip down to, to canada with it wow so okay quite, quite a so lot of miles already. it's already being used decently and i mean for those that don't know the turbo s exclusive series basically is the most powerful of the more comfortable 911s that's ever been made right they're very comfortable, they're very fast. Uh, the acceleration is, is as good as most of the other supercars. Great traction because of the all-wheel drive and the little accents that Porsche did this year on this car with a carbon fiber this bonnet. This is lovely. The whole bonnet's carbon, masked off to have those stripes. And oh, and the roof, the roof. Yeah, it's with, look, the, you, the roof has the stripes following through all the way to the back. So That's really cool. And with all the GT cars, this is one of the only convertibles Porsche makes these days that mm. actually are numbered cars. So there's a little yeah. display where it shows in the front. Oh, really? They numbers. still number it? This okay. is uh, 097 out of 200. Okay, okay. Very cool. Well, I, to be honest, wasn't actually sure that they made a convertible, so I learned something new today. 
<laughs> very short supply in this And then, I, I mean, this lineup behind is looking very special as well, but Testarossa. Why, why, you could have lots of Ferraris. This is your choice of one Ferrari in the collection. No. When I was growing up, this was the most iconic car. Uh -huh. Miami Vice, the yeah. movies that they use this car. In. It's still one of the most iconic cars that Ferrari ever built. It drives great, it's a 12 cylinder with a manual gated shifter. Yeah. Uh, it drives good, it sounds well. And you know, it's not fairly expensive. It's, it's, it's very affordable, yeah. so you can, you can drive it. Service isn't affordable, but- No, well, but relative <laughs> to some of the more limited Ferraris, the price tags have stayed in, in check a little bit. Right, and it matches the Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> the picture's up on the wall. And then, that's not a car. Where did this come from? Yeah, <laughs> someone just dropped, dropped a, a plane? A plane, a, a boat, a plane, a car, a... Uh, jet ski? No, a it's, jet ski. it's everything. It's, it's a combination of everything. A bit, recently, we partnered up with Icon. Yeah. And as you know, you know, toys in here. This happens to be a toy that I'm very fond of. Uh, it's an uh, Icon A5 airplane, relatively priced, under 400,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. Very easy to drive. It's like almost, you could fly it like a, like a car. The inside cockpit is so, uh, if you look at it, it looks almost like a, an automobile. Uh, carbon dash? Carbon dash. It, the entire plane is made out of carbon fiber, so fairly oh, really? light, yes. Okay. And the good news is it's made out of carbon fiber, so you can actually, it's very durable, it has anti spin resist, you know, it's, it's you can't spin this plane okay. the way they designed it. Uh, only a few hours of training is required because it's a sport license. You can land it in sea, on, on water, or land, yeah. uh, and has many safety functions, like a ballistic parachute. Oh, okay. <laughs> it does everything then. <laughs> Hopefully you never need. No, and then if we dip under the wing, um, carefully, just to continue our exploration around, and I'm just going to point out at this moment, my car is here, <laughs> having parked it up to come in and visit. You have a thing for G-Wagons. I really do. I've always been a G-Wagon fan. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I've, uh, thanks to a good friend of mine that got me into this, is one of the things in New York City is potholes and the bad roads. Yes. This is probably one of the sexiest things you can drive with the top down. It comes with a power top, so it's yeah. just a button. Okay. And you could drive it in New York City, you can have fun with it, you can go over, you can go off-roading with it. Yeah. And in New York City, it's probably one of the most practical cars. So I have a, quite a few of these uh, convertibles. And uh, hold on, Panamericana front grills. Yes, I wanted to modernize it a little bit, so we <laughs> stuck a little 2019 okay. uh, grill on it. We updated it. There's these old 2000s and 2001s, as you know, they only okay. made it. But I do have a final edition 2014, mm -hmm. which is one of 200 we used uh, yep. in pro white. Looks very the, nice. With the brown interior. Um, oh yeah, okay, brown interior on the pearl white, nice. And this one, from air conditioning seats to adaptive cruise control, this has all the modern okay. potential comforts, mm -hmm. and happens to be one of my favorite G-Wagons. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, I mean, I've just taken delivery of my new G-Wagon, and it's much better uh, than driving one of these around those roads, that's for sure. But um, one of the most beautiful cars, in my opinion, ever made, the Lamborghini Miura. It really is. This is, besides the Countach, I think the Miura is probably this car is probably the most iconic Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, it changed the whole way uh, when Ferruccio had this issue with his Ferrari. Yeah. This is what he created. So you look back and see this brand today that's been so successful yeah. because of this man who created this to compete with the Ferraris. The only thing is, if you're a bit tall, you can't easily fit. Um, but moving on, 911. That's a 912. We're just doing a, a, a quick oil service on this car mm -hmm. now, but that's completely restored in Irish green. It's Irish green. I was wondering the color. Okay. Well, it looks very, very nice. Got some nice lighting. And another couple of G-Wagons down at the end as well. And then my car under the bright lights also looking very nice too. Well, you can leave it here, Tim, if you would like. Well, maybe not mine, we, but... We'll Uber you to California. <laughs> <laughs> Any news you're happy to share on that uh, front? Yeah, you know, I recently got a confirmation from Ford that they selected me to get one of the Heritage Edition in my favorite color, Gulf Blue. Fantastic, that's going to fit very nicely, and I promise you are going to enjoy it an awful lot. I can't wait. Um, congratulations on that. So, continuing up. This is one of 183... Uh, 97 911 Turbo S, mm -hmm. uh, can can red interior. Yeah, the interior is strong, very strong, and a good, nice contrast with black. That's a 280 SL. I just love this car because it's manual transmission, the top comes off. Uh, just a classic car that you can easily drive. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, here's an Aston Martin with a manual transmission and the last of the manual transmission with a 12 cylinder engine. Yeah, V12 Vantage S, the seven speed dog leg manual. Yes. Very have you ever cool. driven this thing? Uh, ooh, I don't think I actually have to be honest. It's such a blasted drive, it sounds great and it's so easy mm -hmm. to drive. And then another car that is a proper driver's car. This happens to be one of my favorite cars. This is a GT3 4.0 manual stick shift, three pedal. Uh, 997.2 generation. It was kind of the last hurrah of that, of that GT3 RS really, wasn't it? It really is. And it, it really, the way it feels when you drive it, you can take it to the racetrack pretty much in the same setup and have yeah. fun, bring it back, and have just a couple of rocks stuck to your tires. That's about it. <laughs> and then here's another 89 speed. So this is linen. Uh, actually belongs to a friend of mine that we just sold to. So it's heading down to Miami soon. Okay, and then the Carrera GT again. This, this is like a, this is my daily driver. Right? So Couple of bugs in the front <laughs> from driving. So wait, wait, just just hear that again. This is your daily driver. This is my daily driver. I That's drive it. I've put over thirty thousand miles of Carrera GTs, different ones. Yeah. If you add it up. Never needed a clutch. Uh, love driving them. The way they sound. It's obviously been my favorite car. And um, well, I, th I think this cues an upcoming piece with this that we're going to have to do. But uh, I can spot the interior as well. You told you told me to give a peek through the window. And um, oh yeah, this this happens to have a an Amstel interior. Uh, we open, we're not open now, at the moment. That's cool. Nod back there as well. Yes. And then uh, some F-types. Yeah, we have a, a, our own ceramic core detailing facility that mm -hmm. we cater to our clients as well as our collection of cars. Mm -hmm. uh, so any client wants to do a detailing ceramic pro or a uh, paint protection wrap, we do that here in-house. Amazing. And then uh, just come back through really to, to take it all in and uh, enjoy the space and the view of all of the cars and this is really really stunning i mean it's an it's a, a beautiful way to show the cars uh, and to allow other people to uh, to see them as well so thank you very much for allowing us My in pleasure. to take a look around appreciate it an awful lot always nice fantastic to you, definitely and uh yeah what a place we almost didn't touch on this tell us about this this, this is the, the car that's inside here which is uh, a 1956 550 spider so it has the original license plate mm -hmm. The original license plate frame from 56. As really? Well. Yeah, it's been restored <laughs> once. If you look around and see the the leather is all original on it. Mm -hmm. These are all original straps. The interior is all original on it. And the funny thing I find about this is when modern cars talk about being stripped out, compared to that, they really aren't. That is stripped out. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> wow. They use leather inside mm -hmm. here. Back in the days before there were moldings and, yeah, yeah. and, and trimmings in there. Uh, but it's definitely all aluminum, original wheels on it. It's a blast to drive. And it's, I take it to New York City sometimes. You've driven this in, like in Manhattan? Plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> People must be very confused by what they're looking at. And I guess it's sitting pride of place right here uh, in the entrance in front of all of the cars behind. Well then, what a collection. A big thanks, as I said to Sean, for showing us around his cars that are on display here inside the Supercar Event Center. This space that can be used for events or could just be used for displaying cars in this incredible way. What a style, having the cars on these uh, platforms almost, of course, needing to use ramps to place them, but evenly spaced out across the showroom and the number of different colors as well, the special colors. Of course, if you know my collection, you'll know how much I love the concept of a light blue car next to the livery that you have on the center, the bright yellow, the green, the blue, uh, the bronze of the Turbo S, the red, uh, the golf, um, the hell, Gelb, as it was called, uh, of the Speedster. But this is a really, really nice place. Some videos playing in the background from different car events. And I'm also just gonna say as well, by the way, that Sean runs um, some events also, some charity events in the region up here in the Northeast of the US. Uh, raises a lot of money for charities as well, the different events, which is a really, really cool thing to be able to give back and use the cars in a positive way as well. So that's very, very special. And I'll also pop some links um, down below if you'd like to know uh, some more about that. But today, visiting here, what a place, what an amazing collection some incredible cars of course a bias towards the Porsches but I think well I hope you've enjoyed being able to take a look around so big thanks again I'll also pop the link down below to Sean's page the uh, Top Gear Imports NJ page or Top Gear Porsche uh, page that you'll be able to find as well but that is it for today thank you very much for joining me for my first day here on the USA tour but there is a lot more to come that's it for now though I'll see you again very soon cheers